was there by faith, I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad to be with you once again. And I trust God that uh, uh, for the series that are coming ahead of us, uh, you will be blessed. Let us pray together. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity and the privilege to share your word, to be with the uh, television viewers. We pray that you shall bless every family, every individual, and even our nation. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Uh, as, I, as I told you in the last program, those who watched, that uh, we are now entering in, into a season uh, of sharing areas that are practical in our lives, that uh, where many people have, uh, have asked questions and uh, they have not had answers, and we shall be talking about the revelation of issues that uh, would cause you to suffer in this life. So our emphasis will be this life through the shadow of death into revival. So we want to share uh, concerning uh, times of battles, times of battles because we are on earth and Jesus said, in the world there shall be tribulations. Take heart, I have overcome the world. So in Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, the word says, If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. The issue of sharpening the axe, and we are the battle axe in the hand of our Lord. So we should be sharp. We should be able to do things uh, with wisdom, not so much using too much strength. And God would want to sharpen us. God would want to give us wisdom. God would want to give us revelation. And uh, those who have heard what we have shared concerning the Holy Spirit, you will know that the Holy Spirit is the one that give us revel gives us revelation. He gives us wisdom. So in terms of sharpening the axe, I, I guess I know it from the practical uh, side of it. As I grew up, I did many things. Uh, one time, I was uh, given a, sh a certain portion of forest to clear uh, by my uncle so that he could plant some crops. So clearing the forest uh, was not so easy. I had to, to fell many trees, big trees. And therefore, I, I had to use an ax. And I learned how to sharpen. Every, after every uh, short moment, I would go back and sharpen the ax so that I don't use much strength. So later on in life, I go, as I was saved and I came to know the word, I came across this, this scripture. That if the ax is dull and one does not sharpen, sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. And I thank God that even in the ministry, God has given me revelations concerning certain issues that uh, we go through, issues that cause pain, issues that uh, make people 
feel like it's no, uh, life is no longer interesting. So later on, we shall be going into the details. But we are talking about times of battles. Times of battles. In Jeremiah 51 verse 20, uh, we see the, the word saying there, you are my, my battle axe and weapons of war, for with you I will break the nation in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. So we are the battle axe in the hand of the Lord. God wants to use us. He was talking about Jeremiah, and he knew him before he was born in his mother's womb, and he, he appointed him to deal with the nations, and so on and so on. But we want to understand that it is very, very important that we relate with God, that we be able to understand God, that we be able to, to understand that we are co-workers with God, even concerning our own individual lives. If we are not sharp enough, if we do not have revelation of anything, then it means that we are going to pray hard and pray and fast, and we, we are still not getting solutions. And we shall be going into these issues. Many people have come and said, Pastor, I have prayed, I have fasted for many years, and I have not seen the answer. So what is the issue? We need to sharpen. We need to know what is the real issue, what is the real problem. Revelation. The Word of God has been there for many years. The Bible has been there, been there for very many years. But you know what? With the help of the Holy Spirit, you will still see new things that you have never seen before through the word of God. And this is how we should think, this is how we should do. As doctors do, when you go to hospital with a certain uh, pain, wherever it is, the doctor will always seek to know, to know the real problem. And he will send you for, for scans and tests and a number of tests before he's able to address the issue. We as Christians, we are not used to that. We are not used to discerning, we are not used to, to, to diagnosing and finding out the real problem, the real spiritual problem that would make us be in tears for a long time. So as we continue, you are going to see more of this. And I'm going to emphasize certain places in life where when you address the real issue, the problem that has been there for 10 years or 20 years will go within a day, within a week, or a month, depending on your heart. Everything spiritual depends on our hearts. So the word is saying, we are co-workers with God. We are the battle axe. So if the, the, the Lord wants to, to change this nation of Kenya, he has to use somebody because God has given authority to human beings here on earth. So God is looking for somebody. God, God, God is looking for a vessel. And this somebody and this vessel, the axe, should be sharp. So we want to continue looking at the word of God, getting revelations, and get sharpened. So that as we work with God, then we are sharp. We are able to discern issues. We are able even to understand God. Because if we do not understand God, and we say it again in, an, in other programs, uh, Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together unless they are agreed? If we are not in, a full, in full agreement with the Lord, then the journey is not smooth. And remember, we are in the battlefield. In the battlefield, command is very, very important. And obedience to command is very, very important. So we need to make adjustments in our lives so that even as we fight the battles here on earth, and there are many and they are very diverse, then we are a, a sort of people that when God speaks, we are able to hear what he's saying. He's able to give us a revelation because we are smooth enough, our hearts are willing, our hearts are ready to receive instructions, and as, as we, act, we become capable of re receiving instructions, then it means that we shall be able to win the battles. Zechariah uh, 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 chapter 4 verse 6 says, It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That was uh, uh, being spoken concerning Zerubbabel, and it had to do with the opposition and the battles concerning the, the rebuilding of the temple of, of, of God. But God is saying 
it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit, says the Lord. We have dealt a lot with the spirit of God. And he's the one on duty. He's the master on duty. Who's at in school and colleges, he's the master on duty. You don't ignore the master on duty because you, you, you have a class master or dormitory master if you're in boarding school or any other master. The master on duty should be respected for the period he's on duty. The Holy Spirit is the one on duty. And we don't want to go too deep on that because we have covered that. So it is by the Spirit that we are going to win. It is by the Spirit that we are going to overcome. And Jesus said in, uh, <clears throat> in John chapter 8, verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall, uh, shall make you free. I know we have quoted that scripture many times, but I want to keep quoting the relevant scriptures for the relevant portion of what we are saying. So if you don't have the truth, then you cannot fight the battle effectively. In army, <coughs> in army, when people are fighting, they have a tendency of sending spies. Just like Moses sent spies, Joshua sent spies, to spy the land, to spy the, 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 uh, the, 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 the opposition or the other army, their strength, the way they are operating, so that you can strategize. So it is very, very important that we get to, 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 uh, to, to yield or to allow the Holy Spirit to give us understanding, to give us the truth, to give us revelation, to lead us. Again, because he's on duty. So it is important to understand if we are, you are a Christian, and as long as we are Christians, then we should understand spiritual battles. And we are not, not just here to do spiritual battles, but we must address issues that exist. We must address issues that are real. For again, I quote, Jesus said, in the world there shall be tribulations, there shall be battles, there shall be issues, but take heart. I have overcome. That was Jesus. But he sent his Holy Spirit. He sent the Spirit of God to be with you, to be an overcomer, so that you have a revelation, so that you are able to fight the battles, so that you are able to, fa to face the opposition, and therefore you must be sharp. You as a battle axe, you as an axe in the hand of the Lord, just like Jeremiah, God wanted Jeremiah to be an axe in his hand so that he can, he can break the nations. So, you, so it is with you also. You have a role to play. And, and many times we face challenges and we face issues and for some people they feel, what's the point of living? You know, that is suicidal. God has not called us to take suicidal missions. He has called you and you are born for a reason. There is a reason why you are here on earth. And that reason is only God who knows. The rest of us just see a glimpse, just see a, a bit of what God is doing. So it is very, very important for you, for you as a viewer, to think, what is God saying? We should not be so ignorant. We should not be so dull. If we are ignorant, if we are dull, we are going to, to labor and labor and we get very little. We want to, to, to do things faster, we want to do things in simplicity, and I always say, my God is a very simple God. We are complex. We are complicated, and we try to make him work within our complicated thoughts and, and our ways. Our God is very simple, and all that he needs you to do is to listen and hear his word and believe his word just the way it is without complication. And that's why Jesus said that the kingdom of God is for those that are like little children. Little children don't argue too much. They don't reason too much. They just accept what is put before them. So I want to, to encourage you. I want to encourage you that in God, we are going to go far. And as we continue going deeper and deeper into, in this area, we shall be seeing people who have gone through issues and through many issues, and God has seen them uh, through. I'm not talking about the stories in the Bible. 
I'm talking about people living, people on phone, people we can refer to who have gotten their victory because they became simple and they got the revelation with a bit of help. And I'm here to help you as you continue following these programs to step by step, on a step-by-step -step basis to be able to get some of the revelations that you have not seen and you have not heard before. Revelation of their truth in the word of God is the, pure, uh, is the whole responsibility of the counselor, that is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that is responsible to revealing the truth, to reveal to you, to help you to know the whole truth. So Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he will guide you into all truth. He will help you into all truth. And it's amazing the amount of truth there is that we need to, to know concerning this life. Concerning this life that has to go through the valley of the shadow of death and then get into revival. God wants us to have the truth that we need to have so that we can see his glory. So that we can see him as he is. A glorious God, a mighty God, a wonderful God, a God that can be, can be trusted. So let's continue looking unto the Lord. Let's continue trusting the Holy Spirit. He has everything, every bit of truth that you need. Maybe you are there and your marriage is not that sound. It's rocky. Maybe you are there and you have struggled for years without job, or struggling to get jobs, or you get jobs and they fall by, by the wayside. Maybe you are there and the children are giving you trouble. They are, they are rebellious and uh, some of them have refused to go to school or to go to college. There, there are many issues that we face. Maybe, maybe you are there and you have certain conditions that the doctors are not able to deal with. I want you to, to, to know that there is nothing impossible before our God. I want to encourage you that if others have healed, if others have gotten the, the revelation as to what they need to do, because the majority of cases where issues are difficult and you're a Christian and you pray uh, and you fast and you walk right with God, but things are not happening according to your prayers, there is something that you don't know. There is something that is missing in your life. That's all. It's not that you are a bad uh, brother or you are a bad sister or you are a bad pastor. No. There is something that needs adjustment. And the majority of cases, that thing that needs adjustment is not on the Lord's side. It is on my side. It is on your side because you are not sharp enough. You are a battle axe, but you are not sharp enough. You don't have revelation. You, you go blindly. You go, you feed on flesh. Too many people are telling you too many things. So that could be the problem. But when you get help and you are able to, to hear from the Spirit of God, and the Spirit himself may speak to you direct, but here I'm encouraging you so that all of us can move together. So once the various adjustments are done in our lives, it will amaze you. And I want you to keep listening and to keep watching the, the series we have at the moment. And it will amaze you as to how much the Lord can do in our lives. His involvement in battle is an assurance of victory. We saw uh, earlier in, in other programs that Jesus is on the right hand of our Father interceding for the saints. Interceding for you, interceding for us. We also saw that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And we say it that the Holy Spirit only says what he hears. And he does what he sees Jesus do or Father do. So the Holy Spirit is like duplicating or copying or echoing what Jesus is doing. And he's the one that is, speaks to us. Because when the Lord, when God wants to speak to us, it's by his Holy Spirit. 
And so here we, we are saying, when you're in battle, this spirit that knows the will of God concerning your life, and he's praying, agonizing, with, 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 with agony, with, with a lot of force of intercession and for you and for me. There is no way he cannot win the battle for you. So, don't ignore the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't ignore what God can do if you allow him. Because the main issue here is allowing. Because you have responsibility concerning this temple. This, this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Is a temple of God. And we can shut him out. And we can give him boundaries. Those boundaries are the issue. He wants to take full control. So trust God that uh, as we address issues that uh, may be prevailing around your life, uh, around my life, the Holy Spirit will have full control over your life. The devil does not understand when you pray in the Spirit, with the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, and that is why it's important that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said when he comes, uh, he will be with you and he will be in you. So it's important that the Holy Spirit be in us, that we are immersed, that we are, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when he prays through you, because you have, allow, you have allowed him to use your lips, because he is spirit and God is spirit also. It is us to involve our spirit. So that now there is full agreement. Our spirit, the Holy Spirit and God, we are in full agreement. Then when we are in full agreement with the Trinity, your spirit being in full agreement with the Trinity, there is no way the devil can, be, can, 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 can beat you. There is no way the devil can overcome you. We must be overcomers. We must overcome. Because the devil has never been too big to, to overcome God, to beat God in that uh, uh, contest. In the spirit, I say, if pain persists, seek the truth. So in the world, they say, if pain persists, see a doctor. But I'm saying, in the spirit, I say, if you still have pain and you have prayed and you have fasted and you have done all that you know, then go to the drawing board and seek to know the truth. For indeed, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we see a situation, a case, where uh, the king of uh, Syria would attack, would uh, plan to attack uh, the king of Israel. And Elisha, a man who had double portion of the spirit that was in Elijah, Elisha would be able to see and know uh, that uh, where the king of Syria would, would, would wait for the king of Israel. So Elisha would go and tell the king of uh, Israel, do not use this route because the king of Syria is waiting for you in that direction. So that went on for quite a number of times until the king of Syria was asking his people, I want to know from you who is, who is uh, betraying us. Because every time we plan, the king of Israel is able to avoid the, where we are. So the people told the king of Syria, no, no, no. It is that prophet who is, uh, who is in Israel, prophet uh, Elisha. He knows what you say in your bedroom. So the king of Syria wanted to get hold of Elisha. And so they came at night and surrounded the city where Elisha was with horses and chariots. And when the, the, the servant of Elisha went early in the morning to look around, he found that they were surrounded. And so he was crying, telling his master, Elisha, what shall we do? And we see Elisha telling his servant, do not be afraid. 
those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And then he prayed a prayer. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when the eyes of uh, the servant of Elisha were opened, he was able to see the chariots of fire surrounding Elisha so that uh, uh, the king of uh, Syria could not get hold of Elisha. So that's where we are. What was Elisha seeing? He was seeing victory. He was seeing chariots of fire surrounding them for security. He saw perfect security. What was the servant seeing? He was seeing the enemy. He was seeing the, uh, themselves being surrounded by the, 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 the Syrians. And he had a cry. I wonder what you are seeing in your life. Desperation. Defeat. No doors closed on you. But what does the Lord want you to see? He wants you to see victory. He wants to see that you, you have a mighty army around you, surrounding you. He wants to, you to know that the Lord will not forsake you. The Lord will not leave you or forsake you. The Lord will embrace you, shield you, protect you. That's what the Lord wants you to see. But you see, if you only see in the natural, like we see things in the natural and they affect us. If you don't have any other way of seeing, then it means you always be, be desperate. You always be on the run. You always be in tears. So we want to allow the Spirit of God to help us to see that God is on our side. God loves us. And we shall see that as we hear of others who, ha who are in the same situation that you are in, and God has seen them through. The situation may have been there for 10 years, or 20 years, or even 30 years. But others have gotten out of that situation for a, within a day, or a week, or a month. It all depends on your heart. It all depends on ha how hard your, uh, your heart is. But if your heart is very smooth, if your heart is broken, and you allow God to be God, despite what you have gone through. And by the way, I have had 51 cases of attempted suicide. Why do people want to kill themselves? Because there have been failures and failures and failures, even the, in the areas where they are professionals. How does that tell you? There are things we don't know. There are things we do not understand. So I, I want you to keep listening, to keep watching, because God is going to reveal to you something that you never knew, something that you have not seen before, something that will encourage you, because others have had victory. By the time we come to the end of this series, I want to win you. I want you to be convicted that God loves you, that our God is not a hostile God, that if we can do things for others to give them victory, there is no reason why he should not do the same to you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray that the Lord will open your eyes and be able to see that the Lord will sharpen you. Let's pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the viewers of this uh, program that you open their eyes that they may see you. Open their eyes that they may see victory, even where there appears to be defeat. Open their eyes to see that you will never leave them, you will never forsake them. So, Lord, I pray that you minister to them and heal them in those areas, in the battlefield where they are fighting and they have not seen victory for long. I pray that you shall give them victory, much victory. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs>